So here's a question that I think is worth posing to you. You believe that after you die you will be rewarded with paradise or punished with damnation. You believe that there is life after death, that your existence, your consciousness will somehow continue. And I've been thinking a lot about this notion lately for obvious reasons. And the more I think about it, the more ridiculous it seems to me. I don't see um, how it could be possible, uh, feasibly. I don't see how that could really work. Um, here's why. We are a compilation of senses and perceptions. Uh, now... Our senses are derived from... Well, let's go through our five senses. Uh, we have touch. That's our central nervous system. A physical construct. We have smell. Olfactory. That's our noses. And, and uh, we have uh, the ability to hear. That's our ears. Physical. And, and all the mechanisms uh, fully explored, or mostly explored anyway. We have uh, vision, optical, uh, we have taste. That's what this thing's for, among other things. Um, so these are all physical things, and they're all connected to this uh, thing in here that you can't see called a brain. And this brain uh, interprets this data. It gets sent signals from uh, these physical systems uh, among uh, throughout your body, mostly around the head, <laughs> because that's the shortest distance, but your nervous system is, of course, all over your body. <laughs> These are all physical things. Um, when you remove uh, the brain from these things, you have no sensations whatsoever. You're basically Helen Keller. So if the soul is capable of of being you, then it would have to be capable of these things by itself. And if it's capable of these things by itself, then why is it that if you cripple someone's nose, they can't smell anymore because there would be some kind of backup in the soul? Uh, I mean, if a soul can't smell or hear or taste or touch or whatever the other sense is, then how can it really be you? Another thing is... All the thought and all the thought process goes on in the brain, so your brain obviously doesn't. I mean, if if people's brains were leaving their bodies and flying off into space, that'd be a pretty good indication that it might be something after death. But they don't do that; they stay right where they are. The only case you could make for a soul is if the soul was some sort of backup system, something that was backing up all the data. You know, the raw data, like your memories and your thoughts and your feelings. And uh, transporting them somewhere else to some sort of alternate plane. Maybe like a matrix, but that matrix is either a paradise or a, or a den of torture, uh, depending on your religious affiliation and beliefs. And um, what I don't get about this whole thing is that even if that was the case, it wouldn't really be you. It would just be a copy, if you understand what I'm saying. It's like if you downloaded your brain into a machine, and, and you know, that machine was capable of all the things that you're capable of now, and, and, and feeling, and touching, and smelling, and, and etc. That wouldn't be you, it would just be a copy. It would be an di altogether different entity. Explain to me where I'm wrong. Explain to me where my reason is faulty. And he was going to stop it by shooting his classmates. And he went out there and he got himself a Glock, 9mm, and a 22. He started <laughs> blowing motherfuckers away. And America put on the fucking pageant once again. <laughs> connected to mine at all are suffering a tragedy. Whoa. Little crocodile tears. Mwah. 
And what is the fate of our killer, Mr. Joe Sung Hyu, or whatever the fuck his name is? He's famous. They put him on NBC News. He got to speak his fucking piece as if he had a valid opinion. Don't you think it sends kind of a strange message to this country, to, to these people, these alienated people, that the only way you're going to get our attention is if you kill a few people? Yeah, if you shoot your classmates, we'll put you on TV. We'll put you on the cover of the magazine. We're going to have a national discourse about you. You are a celebrity forever, or at least for a long fucking time. There was a story not too long ago about this other Asian kid who looked a lot like Joe Sung Hyu, who just so happened to have written this really crazy little story where he had sex with a corpse in the story. Uh, the assignment the description for the assignment that he did, this is an honor student, by the way. The description for the assignment that he did was something along the lines of be creative, be unfettered, don't censor yourself. Well, apparently when they said don't censor yourself, they meant because we will gladly censor you. I guess the First Amendment doesn't apply to public schools anymore. Could have sworn those were run by the government. America has vilified artists, people who express themselves, and they have glorified killers. Don't write a paper. Don't paint a picture. Don't write a poem. Kill somebody. That's the way you get famous. That's the way people listen. That is the message that America is sending to these kids. We live in an age without answers and increasingly without questions. Soon there will only be statements and none of them will be true. What is this subversion? This distraction. Those who we call representatives no longer represent us. They're bailout using our tax dollars against our will. Failed. And the Dow Jones dropped 800 points. It closed below 10,000 for the first time since 2004. They used our money to solve a problem that they couldn't even solve. They might as well have taken our money and put it in a gigantic pile, poured gasoline over it, and lit it on fire like the Joker did in the Dark Knight. Because ultimately that's what these representatives and congressmen and senators are. They're Jokers. And so the penis that America has been using to fuck the rest of the world has gotten just a little bit shorter. And the penis that America has been using to fuck its own citizens has gotten a little bit longer, a little bit wider, a little bit harder, a little bit faster. We're all fucked up inside, bleeding internally, shitting on the floor of the American dream. There can be no pursuit of happiness in an ideological vacuum. There can be no pursuit of happiness in an economic disaster area. The colors of this country should no longer be red, white, and blue. It should simply be brown, because this country is full of shit and shitheads and creationists. We are a nation under God, when we should be a nation above such childish superstitions. Many of us long for the destruction of this world. Some of us implicitly, some of us explicitly. But I say that any fool can seek destruction. Destruction is easy. Creation is difficult. Building things that last is hard. Making things better, that's a challenge. So here's the question, folks. Who's up to it?